Well, we got earnings from most of the major U.S. banks south of the border. And in fact, they were greeted so well that earnings season is a big factor in what drove the KBW Bank Index that tracks the major banks south of the border into a fresh bull market, up 20 percent from those May lows. And it wasn't perfect set of results, but it certainly was greeted uh, with enthusiasm by investors. This, of course, before we get Canadian bank earnings, we're going to take a look at what the U.S. bank earnings story has in store for Canadian banks. We've got John Aiken. He's head of research at Barclays for the financial sector. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So what was your interpretation of the actual results and what this could mean for Canadian banks with U.S. exposure? Well, like you said, the uh, the market was quite pleased with the U.S. bank's uh, earnings. And basically, it was because the, the earnings came in better than expected. Now, as, as you alluded to, this doesn't mean that everything is rosy and perfect in the, in the banking world. But when you come in uh, and, and beat expectations, that's usually a, a positive indicator for, for value. Now, what we're seeing, though, is that a lot of the issues Issues that would have been haunting the U.S. sector have actually eased. Mostly the, depo the flight of deposits that uh, scared everybody in March. That seems to be settling. The issue is, though, is that the cost of deposits continue to increase, and we're seeing margin compression on on the U.S. side. Um, lending growth is slowing down. Again, not not terribly surprising. But I guess the one of the biggest factor, at least for the larger U.S. banks, is while capital markets were underwhelming, they were still far better than what the market had I mean, looking for and what the banks themselves have been guiding to. So this is something that translates reasonably well in terms of the Canadian banks, where we already saw a downdraft in the second quarter. The problem, though, with, with the Canadian banks is in the third quarter actually has the summer months of July, yeah. and that's usually a down. So uh, the street is looking for a decline in the Canadian bank earnings from capital markets. But I do think that there's uh, at least a possibility it's not going to be as dire as expected. And when I think capital markets, especially in the U.S., I think Royal has got the exposure there, and it's got the wealth management exposure. Does TD have more exposure with this Cowan acquisition? Is that going to be you know, more of a positive for them than it had been in the past? It, it increases it. But when you look even with Cowan on board for TD, their relative uh, revenues coming out of capital markets is still significantly lower than, than Royal. So it's definitely a, a positive, something that TD probably does need, but it's not necessarily going to be a tipping point for TD in the quarter. Um, okay, so let's talk uh, what will be a tipping point, because with this rally that we've seen in the U.S. banks, the Canadian bank stocks have underperformed that. Um, do you see that changing? Not necessarily until we actually get some more negative outlook in terms of the economy. So everyone now, if we if we were sitting here a month and a half ago, was okay, we're definitely going to head into a recession. The discussion now is, well, is it actually going to be a soft landing versus a recession? And typically against the U.S. banks, the Canadian banks only really outperform in a down market. Oh. And so when, when you're actually seeing uh, beta coming back into the marketplace, that's usually when you see the U.S. banks and the U.S. regionals in particular outperform the Canadian banks banks. Now, uh, I do think that there's probably a little bit of uplift in terms of the Canadian bank valuations if we get a solid third quarter reporting. But again, people are still looking through the earnings and saying, OK, what are, what actually is going to happen? Are we going to see a recession in late 23 or early 24? And that's really what's going to dictate the outlook. What's your top idea right now in the, in the financials, if you had to hold one? Um, right now, actually, in the broad financials, we actually we still really big fans of the PNC sector. Uh, so the property and casualty okay. sector. Uh, very well run operations. Uh, it is the most recession proof business model that, that we see. And we still see a fair amount of runway for growth for both um, Intact and uh, Definity, largely because of the hard pricing market, meaning that they're actually able to continue to increase the prices that they're charging for insurance. And that is uh, at least uh, maintaining the cost of inflation, if not beating that. Is they Are they going to have any issues, though, due to the wildfires? Yes. Now, um, Intact Art has already pre-announced uh, what they call their catastrophe losses, but basically this was largely expected and it gets shrugged off by the market because it's viewed as one time. It's not impacting capital. It doesn't necessarily impair the outlook for earnings moving forward, so it's more of a shrug of the shoulders and move on. And then is it like next year when they go to renew whatever their deals are in those areas, the prices are going to go up? Absolutely. They have, they have a, a, 
a reason, a rationale, and, and it is quite solid to continue to increase the, the, the pricing. And so when we look at almost all the markets in Canada, that's a, that's, well, it's, that is exactly what's happening. The resilient part of the TSX financials has not been the banks. It has been the insurers in part due to, you know, the intact, but also those life codes. Mm -hmm. That's been the way to play rising rates. And sometimes there's a trade. Do I want to own the banks? Do I want to overweight the insurers? Are you still of the mind that insurers are still set to outperform? And at what point would you call that, uh, expect that to shift? Yes, it, at, at 50,000 feet, absolutely. The, the rising interest rate environment is much better for the life codes than it is for the banks. We saw early days beneficial to the banks in terms of margin expansion, but as we saw last quarter, that is basically eased. Um, what, uh, when we do, what we think will flip, though, will be if and when the Bank of Canada decides to cut rates. And then that, then that will be more beneficial for the, for the banks okay. because basically what happens is their deposits reprice faster than their loans. And that, all else being equal, means that the margins will expand. Their deposits reprice faster than their loans, meaning they'll immediately stop paying they'll, they'll, the, as the, much in terms of interest. cost of funding will be lower yeah. and they'll basically still get the same amount of loans on, on the loans. Okay. And um, I, I guess, uh, you know, when we, when we talk about that, what struck me in the most recent set of results from, from the Canadian banks is for the first time in a long while, they're so diversified, but then that really wasn't helping them because each one of their business lines were challenged. Um, costs were still very elevated. It struck me that they had very few levers to pull. Do you think that as we move through the year, they're going to start to have levers to pull, whether it's on costs, whether it's you know a little bit of a coming back to life on capital markets? I mean, where, where could they... Could they rest on their diversification? Absolutely. I, I think that the third quarter is going to look very much like the second quarter. So we are seeing challenges in almost all the segments. But moving forward, I, I do at least personally hope that we're at the trough on capital markets, and that should rebound through the fourth quarter into Q1, as well as on the wealth management side, where we, we've got the households are still trying to figure out what they're doing with discretionary income. But I do think that with the higher interest rates, we're going to start to see more uh, in savings, and that will benefit the Canadian Bank's wealth management operations. All right.